would you rather take $500,000 or have a dinner with Jay-Z? What's up everybody, welcome to Mike Zuniga Films, channel dedicated to talking about how to start and grow a video production business. So, my answer is, just to cut to the chase, I'm gonna take the $500,000, but why? I think when, it's, when it comes to options, something like this, it's always good to look at the pros and cons of both sides. It's easy to say why you would pick $500,000, but there's also gonna be occasions where someone would pick a dinner with Jay-Z. <laughs> what would be the pros and cons of picking a dinner with Jay-Z? Let's talk about pros. I'm gonna be coming from the aspect of what value can I provide Jay-Z as a videographer, as a content creator. Let's say I go and talk to him and say, hey, I'm willing to provide you this value. For example, you don't have to pay me anything. I would like to be your tour, your next tour videographer or content creator. When it comes to tours, behind the scenes, let me film the next behind the scenes for your next music video production, for example. It doesn't necessarily have to start with, hey, let me film your next music video. Start where you can get an in. Let's say he would hire you for that, and pros is you're hired. And necessarily you don't have to be paid for this, you got your foot in the door. You do a great job and goes ahead and uh, recommends you to other people that he may know for behind the scenes filming, uh, tour, videography, video content. And then what are the cons, all right? Well, the cons are you can have a dinner with Jay-Z, sit down and he just says, hey, uh, just work hard and not give up. Takes a few bites and then dips. <laughs> So the cons is you, you, you get advice that, that you already know. Advice that's nothing new. All right, you already know this. You don't get the 500K, it's a big con, all right? But let's look at why choosing this would also be good from a different perspective. Because like I said, I, I didn't choose this, I chose the 500K. But why would someone choose also choose a dinner? Let's say they're not a videographer, right? With the clients I, the clients I work with, they run their own businesses, seven figure, eight figure businesses. And I asked them the similar question, would you take the 500K or have a dinner with Jay-Z? And their answer was different. Majority chose a dinner with Jay-Z. Why did I choose this? Well, because they're running successful companies, they're making 500K a year easily. And so they chose a dinner with Jay-Z because they understand the value of relationships. And when it comes to this, they're running their own companies and they know that they can provide some value with their companies. And like Jay-Z, he's a businessman. So he's looking for opportunities to make money. If he can possibly invest in these companies that my clients work with, then both sides benefit, right? So that would be one scenario where someone would choose a dinner with Jay-Z. Now, it's always important to look at your scenario. Where are you, right? And if you are, if I look back and I am thinking about where I was just getting out of college as a videographer, just starting, and if I was given this option, I would have chose the 500K. But I knew that my relationship with money wouldn't have been similar to what I had today, right? Knowing where I would allocate my money. So with the knowledge I've been gaining over the years on how to manage money, how to budget, how to grow, how to invest, here's how I would break down the 500K. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna pay off debt. Any debt I may have. This includes student loan debt, for example, because that's what I currently have from going to college, all right? So I'm gonna pay that off. So after that, whatever I have left, I'm gonna allocate into my business. So most people say, take that money, invest it in the stock market. All right, that's pretty vague. And then some people say, invest it in the S&P 500, which is a smarter uh, recommendation. And I do that too. However, 
When you are investing, let's say in the stock market, S&P 500, you're investing in a company. So for example, you can be investing in Amazon, you can be investing in Apple, but if you run a business, you're investing in an asset all on its own, right? It's as if you were to invest in those other companies. So since I run a video production business, I would rather take that money and invest it back in my business because why not? I have more control on the direction of my business and where it's going to go. And I would be able to make a bigger return on my investment rather than investing in the S&P 500 and waiting for 20, 30 years until retirement, for example. So I'm not saying one or the other is better. I, I would say if you're running a video production business, do both with the money, do both. But I would invest a bigger percentage back into my business. So invest back into business. It's an asset. Just as if you had real estate, rental real estate, which is an asset, a business is an asset. Why not invest back into it and make it grow? Okay, how would I allocate the money within my business right now in this scenario? So there's a couple options, right? One is, would I invest in a bunch of new top of the line camera gear? No. The reason why is because with the camera gear I have already, maybe I would invest in a couple extra things like extra mics, um, extra lights and things like that. But with the gear I already have, it's able to create high quality videos and it aligns with the type of videos I produce for my clients. So invest in gear, mm, no. But granted, this can be a different situation for you, all right? So if I was just starting out and I needed some gear, then yes, I would invest in gear. But remember when investing in gear, get gear that one, is going to last you years and years and years. Two, it's going to align with the type of productions that you do. For example, when I started out, I didn't need a red camera. That wasn't the type of video productions I, I did. I was filming on the go starting out and I need a very versatile camera that was high quality but can still do many different things. It can film time lapses, it can shoot 4K video, right? So it's always good to look at what your situation is, what type of videos are you producing often for your clients and make your purchases accordingly, all right? So next thing is, would I invest in marketing? Well, what type of marketing? Like Google paid ads or Facebook ads? Honestly, how I've grown my client base is through word of mouth, through relationships and networking. I made it a point to put my content out there and build my relationships using the content I produced as examples. And so with that, I haven't put any paid ads in Google or Facebook. That's how my business is structured right now. Not to say I would do that, I might not do that in the future. I could do that in the future. But as of now, looking at where I am, uh, I wouldn't necessarily put it into those types of ads. Where I would put my money in terms of marketing would be into content creation. Building up my YouTube channel, building up the content, investing in collaborations with people, for example, investing in different types of gear. And still we're on the track of as a videographer, right? So if you're gonna be doing gear reviews, if you're going to be investing in, let's say uh, someone to film behind the scenes for your production, document, things like that, that still goes along the lines of marketing, content creation, building your brand. I think that's very, very important. For example, posting more on YouTube, posting what you do on Instagram, building that up. Lastly, what I would also invest in building a solid team. Now, 
thankfully, I have a skilled team that I was able to build over the years, and that took trial and error. However, there's always room for growth. So for example, finding a good manager or assistant to help you um, when it comes to the editing process, managing editors, finding great editors to bring onto your team full time, I think that's a very important thing. So one would be build team. And I got a question before of, should I start with getting a good editor or a good filmer on the team, like a full-time job? Based on my personal experience, I found that finding a good quality editor first helps you as a videographer because editing takes the longest time. It takes time to do, right? To do properly. And if you're able to find a good editor that you can teach your, I guess you can say your editing style, then that would save you so much time. If you're able to duplicate yourself as an editor, that would be great. Find someone that edits just as good as you or even better. Don't put ego in the way. I know as a filmmaker, you wanna do your own thing, but if you're running a business, you need to find good quality talent. Next thing is, if you need, like for me, when I run my productions, certain productions I can do by myself, solo. Other productions, I need a team. So with those, I contract out uh, team members for that, other videographers that I know, like, and trust and do a great job. And I just hire them per project. But with an editor, you need that full time. So that's what I would invest in. Build a team editor and then hire out contractors per project. Now, this will differ for every single scenario. I know as a videographer, or as a filmmaker, your client base will be different from mine and the types of projects you do will be different. This is just how I would approach this if I were given this option, okay? So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this content. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be sure to push out more content like this in the future. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.